Okay, good morning again, uh, dear students. And again, this is your Prof. Zeus, and this is lecture number three. Okay, so now we will go to the different classifications of taxes. Number one, we can classify taxes according to the scope of or exercise, sorry, exercising authority. Now, in this classification, we can classify tax either as national or municipal or local. So, national tax is collected by the national government. No, it is enforced throughout the country. Uh, what are the taxes included in this national uh, classification? You have the income tax, for example, that's being paid by, you know, by employees, by businessmen, by by corporations, no, by businesses. Uh, donors tax. Okay, donors tax is imposed everywhere uh, uh, in the Philippines, from Apari to Holo. So if uh, say, for example, you gave a, 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 a donation, then you would have to pay the corresponding donor tax. You no, know? be it in you know if you you um, you made the donation in Manila or in Quezon City or in the provinces, still you are going to pay the donor tax. You no, know? what else? The estate tax. You no, know? and then of course the value added tax. We are very much uh, um, familiar with the value added tax. No, yung vat na pinatawag natin. And then, of course, the second classification according to the scope or exercising authority is the local or municipal tax. Now, this local or municipal tax are being collected by the local government, yung mga LGUs natin. So, for example, Taguig, no, yung Makati, they are collecting their uh, national, their, their municipal or local tax. No? Um, examples of this are the real estate taxes, no? yung mga amilyar na tinatawag natin. So, every January, uh, you know, um, property owners need to pay their real estate tax. Okay, so yon. And then, of course, yung mga local business taxes, yung mga mayor's permit. Okay, those are examples of uh, local or municipal tax. So that's number one classification according to the scope or authorizing, um, authorizing uh, or exercising authority. Next one, according to the subject matter or the object of taxation. It could be personal, capitation, or poll tax. So this is actually a fixed amount imposed upon persons or upon persons of a certain class residing within the jurisdiction of the taxing authority without regard to their property or occupation or business in which they may be engaged. Though fairly easy to understand and collect, this tax is limited in the amount of revenue it can produce. Like what, for example, like the community tax, yung ating cedula before, no? Uh, although it's not, uh, now it's not being uh, um, it's not being implemented anymore. No? And then of course, you have the property tax, no? Uh, it is imposed on property in proportion to its value, like yung real property, yung real estate tax natin, no? Yung real estate tax is based on the value of your property. So, pag tumaas yung value ng property, then you can expect a higher amount of tax, no? Like my condo in, in Taguig, for instance. I got that 2004. So, 2004, Taguig wasn't a city yet. So, I'm paying like 4,000 pesos or 5,000 pesos for uh, the real estate tax. But, but when Taguig was converted into a city, Taguig City, no? From 4,000, naging 12,000 yung aking real estate tax. Just imagine how huge the jump was. No? So talagang magugulat ka sa laki nung, mga, nung, uh, um, nung jump, nung tax, ba, nung tax na babayaran mo. No? So that's what we call the property tax. So the third one, according to who bears the burden of the tax. So dito, sino ba ang nag-bear ng burden? Number one, we can have, uh, number one is what we call the direct tax and of course the indirect tax. Yung direct tax, ibig sabihin to, the liability for the tax and the burden of the tax falls on the same taxpayer. Okay, so sa'yo lang yun. No, like in the case of what? Income taxation. Yung tax ko sa akin, I have to pay my own uh, personal income tax. Now, pag indirect tax naman, no, this is where you can shift, no? Uh, you can shift the, the, the burden of paying to another taxpayer. Okay? For example, bumili ka sa Jollibee. So, Jollibee bumili ka, merong VAT yun, di ba? Yung VAT na yun, sino ang dapat na mag, mag, ano, magbayad? Yung Jollibee, because that, that VAT was claimed from you by Jollibee. Okay? So, yung value added tax is an example of an indirect tax because it can be shifted to another taxpayer. 
Ganon din, pag ikaw nagbebenta o naging, naging businessman ka, no? Part of the selling price that you will have to, you know, to uh, to claim to your uh, customer is what we call the payment for the value-added tax. But that value-added tax is not yours. That is not yours. That is for the state. So, anong, gaga anong gagawin mo? That is just uh, for safekeeping. Na safekeeping lang yun, kaya yan ay nasa iyo. But you have the obligation to remit it to the government through the BIR every 20th of the following month. Okay, so tandaan natin yan. That is an indirect tax. That is what? Only for safekeeping, kaya yan ay binigay sa iyo. Okay, kaya yan ay binayad sa iyo. You ought not, you, you are not going to keep that but remit that to the BIR. But of course, for value-added tax purposes, if you have uh, input VAT, then those input VAT can be offset against the output VAT. Okay? Now, we also have according to the purpose of the tax. Number one is general or revenue tax. So, this tax is levied without a specific or predetermined purpose. Thus, the revenue collected might, can be appropriated for general public purposes. Okay? So, yung, yung kinokollecta sa atin like the income tax or value-added tax, yung mga yon ay really for general use of the government. So, uh, as I said, these are being, you know, uh, the, the, the taxes that we pay are being uh, are being uh, sent to the National Treasury. At pagka National Treasury na yan, syempre, yan ay for uh, for allocation to the different uh, government offices, government agencies, no, different LGUs, okay, to support those uh, the operations of those various government offices, no? So, hindi yan specific, for example, ay nakulay ta kay San Miguel para kay, kay ganito, no? It becomes part of the of the many assets of the government, no? And pag merong kinakailangan gasto siya, like a project, say for example, sa sa Leyte, sa, sa Taguig, sa Manila, okay, then they will get the resources from that, uh, that fund, no? So, it becomes general fund, Okay? special uh, special tax no tax imposed for specific or special purpose okay lastly yan according to the rate that we apply for the taxes so number 1 is proportional tax so this is based on a, on a fixed uh, percentage of the property or amount of income or receipts like in the case of what value added tax so the tax is to, the tax rate is fixed at 12% so that 12% is fixed, although the base may not be fixed because, of course, as you sell more, you are liable to pay more in terms of value-added tax, no? Yan, uh, estate tax, the, the, the tax is also fixed, okay? The tax rate is fixed, but of course, it depends on the value of the property of the DC, of, of value of the property, no? Then, progressive tax, no? Progressive tax, the tax rate increases as the tax base increases, so... This is actually what we have right now in the Philippines. So we have what we call, we are under the progressive tax system, okay? As your income increases, so does your liability to, uh, for the payment of tax, no? So if, say, for example, you are an employee and uh, you're receiving 250,000 pesos taxable income, then you are, you are not required, no? You are not required to pay any tax, no, on the compensation that you receive. Meron din natin tinatawag na minimum wage earner. So minimum wage earner, earners are not subject to tax. Even their, you know, their, their incentives, even their uh, compensation, their, their what's, what you call that, the overtime pay, they are not uh, subject to tax. Bakit? Kasi nga naman eh, kawawa naman sila, di ba, napakalita ka ng sweldo na, tataxan mo pa. Kaya ang ngayon sa ating taxation system, syempre, Habang tumataas ang sweldo mo, ikaw ang mas, mas may capability to pay the tax. That's why you have to pay more. Okay? And then lastly, of course, yung regressive tax. Yung progressive, as you increase your income, so does your tax. Yung, yung regressive naman, no, the tax rate decreases as the tax base increases. Magkabaliktad, no? Dito sa Pilipinas, wala pa akong naisip na regressive tax sa atin. Siyempre, dapat progressive based on the capability of the taxpayer. So, kapag capable ka magbayad, then dapat mas mataas ang tax mo, di ba? Okay. So, let's go to the next topic which is the principles of a sound tax system. So, ano nga ba yung kailangan for us to be able to say that the tax system is uh, sound? Okay. Number one, fiscal adequacy. So, dito sabi, sources of revenue of the government should be sufficient to meet the demand of the public expenditure. 
regardless of business condition, export taxes, trade balances, and problems of economic adjustments. So sa fiscal adequacy, sabi lang dyan, our taxes should be enough no, to cover the expenses of the government. But like in this pandemic situation, okay, we're in uh, practically during the first few months no, of the pandemic, like March, April, May, when we are under the ECQ, walang, walang pumasok na pera practically sa gobyerno because the businesses were closed. So therefore, all the, all the remittances for, for the taxes, like withholding tax and all the stuff, were put to a halt, no? So, walang walang pera ang gobyerno. And then came this, you know, massive reimbursements uh, for health services, no? Because of the result, as a result of the COVID. Okay? Kaya, yun ang isang, ano, isang principle dapat. It has to be adequate to the needs of the government. Number two, equality or theoretical justice. So taxes should relate with the people's income or their ability, capacity to pay. Okay? So kaya nga meron tayong proportionate, di ba? O habang, habang tumataas ang iyong income, dapat mas mataas din ang contribution mo sa government. Hindi pwedeng ang baba ng income mo ang taas ng contribution mo. I think, what, what are we going to have then? No? The rich will become richer and the poor will become poorer. Number three is the administrative feasibility. So tax law should be capable of convenient, just, and effective administration. Each tax should be clear and plain to the taxpayer, capable of uniform enforcement by government officials, convenient as to the time, place, and manner of payment, and not unduly burdensome upon or discouraging to business activity. So in terms of being of administrative, of administrative um, uh, side, no, the tax should be what? Should be clear to the taxpayer. It should not be burdensome to them. No, like yes, one of the negotiante, they should be, you know, uh, encouraged, no, to do business with the Philippines or in the Philippines. Okay, so you an administrative feasibility. Okay, so that's it. Uh, this is lecture three, and I will again. Uh, produce another, you know, a series of lectures for you guys. Okay, so stand by for uh, the other lecture series. Okay, thank you very much and please do keep safe. Okay, we are in the new normal, so always wear your face mask, your face shield whenever applicable. Okay, thank you very much and see you again.